Hey everybody, this is Matt Shu from Upright Health. In this video, we're going to be talking about another video that looks at the importance of FAI bone morphology and pain and arthritis. So there is a study that's going on called the Osteoporotic Fractures in Men study, um, in which uh, they're doing a prospective study on a lot of, uh, a lot of older men. Um, and there's this article that was published in Clinical Orthopedics and Related Research it's published online March 4th, 2015, so it's relatively recent. Um, <clears throat> and it, uh, the, the article's title is Femoroacetabular Impingements, Prevalent and Often Asymptomatic in Older Men. So <clears throat> that kind of gives you uh, a preview of, of what the punchline of this study is. Uh, but I want to give you a quick overview. What they did in this study was looked at 4,140 subjects. So. 4,140 men um, with an average age of 77 plus or minus a standard deviation of five years. So we're talking about senior age men and they took x-rays of uh, these men's uh, hips and uh, looked to see what kind of associations they could find between uh, femoroacetabular impingement bone morphology and actual pain and arthritis and disability. Um, the reason they, they did this, um, they actually have a quick little summary here. Um, <clears throat> the reason they did this is because um, a lot of studies that have been done in the past on FAI were done on, on populations that were only symptomatic. So you would have groups of people who had, um, who had hip pain or were, were reporting problems and then um, this, a study would look at how many of them had FAI bone morphology and, uh, and then would look to see how they deteriorated to see whether or not FAI was um, contributing to that deterioration. So um, they actually noted here, most reports on the prevalence of FAI come from surgical populations and may not represent the prevalence in the general population. Um, so then they go on, not only is the prevalence of FAI determined <clears throat> Not only is the uh, uh, prevalence of FAI determined for all the ages, but from recent studies, it is not yet clear if FAI represents a normal variant or a condition associated with severe and aggressive arthritis. And uh, the second point is if this relationship changes with age. So um, basically they're saying it's not really clear whether or not the bone shapes are the things that contribute to um, deterioration of your hip or if it's just a natural, normal, anatomic variant. So they did this study, they ran a bunch of uh, sophisticated statistical analysis on it. Uh, one, okay, one point I wanna highlight here um, is they say, analyzing the relationship among radiologic features of FAI arthrosis and pain, we found uh, that subjects with radiographic signs of CAM type impingement were less likely to have hip pain compared with patients without signs of FAI. So that's um, pretty interesting. So they're saying that if you had CAM type impingement in this, in this sample of people, um, the CAM type impingement actually uh, ended up uh, translating to lower risk of having hip pain, uh, which is completely flip of the normal conventional understanding of, of uh, FAI morph morphology. Uh, and finally, in summary, radiographic signs of FAI are, are common in old elderly men. Features of pincer and mixed impingements were are, are associated with arthrosis. Um, that tends to do with like um, uh, bone spurs and uh, joint space narrowing. Um, so pincer and mixed impingements are associated with arthrosis, but not with pain. In addition, hips with radiographic signs of CAM FAI are less likely to be painful. This suggests that caution is called for when considering FAI surgery in this population because the radiographic finding might or might not account for the pain and may indeed represent a normal anatomic variant. So um, again, the, the study is basically looking to see whether or not the bone shapes are contributing to pain and contributing to problems with the hip and what they're finding is there is not really a clear causal relationship between the bone shape and actual pain and suffering. So this is another uh, more recent study that's, that I think is pretty well, pretty well done um, that's looking to see whether or not 
um, cam type impingement and mixed impingement or even pincer impingement um, can be blamed for the pain um, in any concrete sense and uh, definitely in this in this sample and in this 4,140 uh, person group of men uh, it does not have anything to do with it so uh, this is just more support in my mind that uh, it is much more important to be looking at other aspects of what contributes to healthy hip function uh, and, and in particular uh, muscle function, muscle pliability, the coordination of muscles around a joint I think are much more important to think about. Um, bone shapes may play some small role in all this but uh, it seems like there are, from studies like this that there are other things to think about besides just the bone shape. So anyway I hope that gives you some food for thought and I hope you remember that pain sucks, life shouldn't.